This is absolutely huge. Hey guys, anyone complaining about idea not having high current devices in their selection? Well, they can stop right now because this is son of POWR3. And you have to admit, this is so much different to the POWR2. I mean, the difference is just gigantic. Son of POWR2 was one of my favorite Sonofs for a couple of reasons. A, he was able to handle up to 15 amps in a single channel, and B, he was able to measure power consumption. So I've used it in several projects, including this lovely dashboard for my PC behind me, and the way to monitor my washing machine and the dishwasher to get notifications when the washing is ready. If you're interested in something like that, well, there's a tutorial there for you as well. But now we have this, and this is a big monster. This is R3 series, and it's the latest device from Sonoff. And as it says on the box, it's a POW series, which means you can actually measure power consumption as well. So there are a couple of differences. The biggest difference is obviously the maximum current limit, which is right now rated at 25 amps or 5,500 watts. I mean, that's like five and a half Hoovers, old Hoovers, that my new Hoovers are nowhere as new, powerful or anything. Once you get over the fact that it is 25 amps, and my sockets in UK are only 16 amps, uh, then you'll start to get a bit nitpicky. Unlike the previous generation, it only has a one channel, so you won't be able to um, control multiple devices with this. However, with 25 amps, you will be able to connect, I don't know, some industrial grade machines, AC units, big heaters, and what not. 25 amps refers to the current limit on resistive loads. I was not able to find any official information about the inductive loads for motors, etc. However, in CE certification, I found the power factor for inductive uh, loads being 0.6, while resistive loads 1.0, so you can do your own calculations. And while on the subject, yes, that's correct, this son of device already comes with FCC, CE and ROSH certifications of the box, so you'll be able to look up the tests and certificates on the website. Very nice, I would like to see that for every son of device moving forward. Other than huge terminals in a correct number, thank you very much Sonoff for that, we have two buttons, a reset and a power toggle, and then at the back we have a hanger which we can use to hang this device, or if you prefer DIN mountable solution then there is a DIN rail support as well. Now, you probably wonder why this device is so big. And I've got the answer for you because I have actually opened it up. But before I'm going to look inside and possibly destroy it like one of the Son of Jewels I did in this video, uh, let's pair it up and check it with a link up. For the most part, it's just a connected relay, so you're not going to see that much. The usual offerings from EVLink like support from timers, etc., or smart integration, so you can actually use Amazon devices or Google devices to control it via cloud. But if you dive into the unit itself, you'll notice that the, there is a power measurement, which is only available on selected some of products. One of the things about the power measurement that I haven't seen before is the ability to actually enter the rate per kilowatt hour. This means that you will get an estimate how much electricity is being consumed in, well, currency rather than, you know, kilowatts. That's all good and handy, however, I'd like to see this uh, being worked on as some of us actually have two tariffs, one for day and one for night. I don't, but I know people that do, so that would be nice to actually have that available as well. The power consumption is available to you as a chart, but you can also download that data if you prefer, or start a custom range, and that will give you how much electricity within that time range has been consumed and uh, how much you're gonna pay for it. With the son of POW R3, you can measure the voltage, you can also measure the current and the power of the uh, device connected to it. In my experiment, I've used the light bulb, and I know this is the most irrelevant way to test 25 amp device, but 
let's let's face it, I don't have a 5,500 watt device around me to test it and uh, see whether it's gonna melt. So yeah, you'll have to bear with me. Uh, it's quite responsive, whether you're gonna use the buttons on the son of itself or whether you're gonna use apps or voice commands. And because it works in uh, a local uh, area network mode, the LAN mode, it, it's just great, it's quick and there is no issues with it. There are additional settings specific to this unit alone. So you have overprotection where you can set limits on voltage, current and power. Very nice to see that. Also you have a default power off behavior, so you can change that to your preference. And lastly you have inching if you just want to pulse at something for a couple of seconds. I guess now we can stop complaining that Sonov doesn't have a high power devices and this probably gonna outpace most of our needs. It is quite heavy so I soon realized why. Inside you'll find very thick cables to carry that current. They covered with a silicon uh, protection so that will increase the fire protection and heat resistance of the unit itself. <clears throat> the wires are properly terminated on both ends so yeah so far so good. I mean I'm not an electrician but uh, even the spacing on the PCB seems reasonable and I guess since it conforms with C and FCC certificates all the professionals thought this way as well. Despite ITAT experiments with different chipsets this is still ESP8266EX driven. This means this is very hackable and if you take a closer look at PCB you'll notice that it's not going to be that difficult because there's a lot of GPIO pins exposed. There are dedicated headers that are capable of probably calculating the powers so if you want to tap to that you're more than free to do so. There are two rows of uh, pinholes in a PCB so you can uh, tap into these GPIOs as well and additional two pairs of uh, GPIO pins that well, it looks like there might be another version of this device since that PCB part seems not to be populated right now. While I didn't find out yet which GPIO is responsible for the relay, I know that GPIO 0, which is needed for flashing, is linked to the power button on this device, so that's going to be that easy to flash. You probably noticed that there are two different PCBs. Now this small PCB is just a transformer that takes main powers and translates that into a 5 volts and 3.3 volts to power up a relay and the ESP respectively. So that's pretty much it and well a probably a bit of trivia underneath that son of sticker, son of uh, POWR3 sticker there was actually a different name I probably ended up with the early prototype units and on my PCB actually says that this is a custom son of POWR2 made by Oyo. So whoever Oyo is, thanks for making that happen. So if you are interested in the video description you will find a link to this bad boy. You know exactly what's gonna happen next. I'll just open it up, flash it with Tasmota and try to figure out if everything is working. So if you want to see this happening, well, you know how YouTube works. I do not have a posting schedule, but I'm sure that video and that article is gonna be available on my website very soon. Use YouTube tools provided to get notified. Also, I have a couple of social links in there somewhere listed for you to follow if you want to get notifications about other projects I'm working on. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.